I want to take the time to point out some images that are not only in the Mid Journey newsfeed, but also images that I've created on my demo account for you guys to see. And I want to kind of explain what images I would use for print on demand and which specific sites for print on demand and what I would use for stock photography and why. So this will kind of give you guys an idea of a lot of the times when I talk about this holistic approach and killing multiple birds with one stone, I really talk about creating images and using them for multiple purposes. And if you have the ability and the time and the resources and the energy to start businesses like these, it's probably a good idea to save some time by using one singular image for multiple purposes. Not only will it help you increase your income, it will keep a diversified approach to your financial gains, but more importantly, it's the strategy that's that works perfectly, killing multiple birds or two birds with one stone. So let's get into it. So here is the news feed. There's a lot of images here. We can go through all of them. We can't go through all of them, excuse me, but we can go through quite a lot. And let's start off with an image like this. So first thing that I would do is I wouldn't use this exact image for stock photography or for print on demand. There's a clear issue with this image is that this image is cut off. Now me personally, I would fix this image because it is a phenomenal image. It looks really good, honestly. So I would, you know, do that, you know, expansion. I would have the image nicely centered. None, no parts of the image are cut off. And then what I would do is I would remove the background and I would use an image like this for various different sites and I could list some of them out. I would definitely use this for something like Redbubble, maybe add some text to it, maybe not. I would add this to T Public. you know, it's a cool design for T Public, So those two work perfectly fine. Spreadshop or Spreadshirt is good as well, you know, that works as well. I might potentially use it for Society6, it's not bad, you know, um, I wouldn't use it necessarily for Zazzle. That's just my opinion. And I probably wouldn't use it for um, uh, Etsy. I probably wouldn't use it for Etsy. Some people would. Some people wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. Not saying it's bad. But for me, the targeting and the keywords, I, I presume I might have a little bit of an issue. And so I look at this and I say, okay, I can take this and upload it to both Redbubble and Public. I can also use it on my own private website if I have a clothing brand, which I do, and sell it there through print on demand. That could work. And let's talk about stock photography. I could absolutely upload this to any stock photography site that allows AI pretty much. So is it a good image overall once it's improved? Like I said, the structure, the things that I would want done to it. The answer is absolutely. So that's an image that would work. An image like this, let's pull out an image like this. This image I would absolutely not use in any print-on-demand field whatsoever. First of all, the image is absolutely hideous. That's first of all. Second of all, uh, I can't picture, I mean, maybe there's somebody who'd purchase this, but I would not picture with a unbiased, purely unbiased opinion, which in nature is oxymoronic. However, in an unbiased opinion, completely, this image would not sell, in my opinion, on a Redbubble, on a Public, on a Society6, on a uh, Zazzle, on an Etsy, I would not use this whatsoever. This is just a weird, ugly image to me. I would also maybe upload it to um, uh, stock photography, but I would not presume that it would generate a lot of income. That's just my opinion. Uh, very ugly image. Definitely not what I would go for. Okay? So, big no-no for me. Okay? First of all, application use. Who the hell is searching an image like this? And by the way, it doesn't really look like a werewolf to me. I mean, the prompt says werewolf, doesn't look like a werewolf. Uh, sorry I'm brutal and blunt, but it's just the reality. Now this image, this image is interesting. This image can absolutely work for a stock photography site. There are people who are searching for abstract type backgrounds all the time. So this is phenomenal. So there, that's an easy money maker. On a website like TeePublic, I would absolutely not upload this to TeePublic. I would absolutely upload this to Society6. And I would absolutely upload it to Redbubble with the presumption that it's most likely going to sell on something like a uh, gaming mat, like, you know, those desk mats, or a mouse pad, or something where the image covers all four corners of the product, as opposed to like one of those t-shirts where it's embedded on the t-shirt, it just won't look good, right? So if I do upload it to Redbubble, which I could, maybe not in 2024, but definitely in like 2018, if I did upload this to Redbubble, 
in 2024, I would presume that it would only sell on products where it stretches all four corners, okay? So that would be my perception. But yes, overall, it's a decent image. It's not terrible. Um, this image, let's use this image. This image is an image that I unfortunately would not upload to any print-on-demand site except for Zazzle. So Zazzle is the only site, and I could, and I could, and I would upload this to any stock photography site. So all stock photography sites, it would absolutely work, but I would not upload this to any print-on-demand site other than Zazzle. Now, I want to be clear about Zazzle, and I've said this maybe a hundred times, maybe not, but on Zazzle, I do not create an image by itself just up there. I use images as elements. Zazzle has this like editor, internal editor, kind of like a uh, like a like a dollar store version of Canva. You know what I mean? You guys know Canva, this like drag and drop website design kind of thing, where you can sit there and design you know canvases and stuff. Well, well, Zazzle has the same thing. It's just obviously like the broke poor person version. Um, and Zazzle is really archaic in its nature when you look at that, but it's a dollar store version, like I said, of Canva, uh, when it has this little editor in it. And, and I know some people might take that as an insult, but it's the absolute truth. And there's no reason for them to be insulted. It's not like I'm insulting, you know, their own businesses. That's just the truth. So I would use this as an element, right? I would save this as an element on my, on my Zazzle, um, like, I don't want to say hard drive, but you guys know what I'm talking about. When you have a Zazzle account, you make those, you know, creations. You can add little elements. You can make your own design. So I'd add this as an element to certain products. You know, wedding invitation card, perfect, you know. Um, I mean, bridal showers, maybe. I mean, perfect. So it's a good one. All right. Uh, what's next? Let's take this image. This image is great for stock photography. I would not upload this to any print-on-demand site at all uh serves no purpose for me okay some people might like it i personally wouldn't there you go i'll just leave it at that okay now now let's take a look at oh this image i gotta take this image all right so this image i would absolutely use by the way in a print on demand spectrum however i wouldn't just upload it like this i would add to it like i would add text and make it something you know that people are searching for that i know sells and you guys know I'm an expert at that. I've share, showcased the uh, Autopilot Passive Income Redbubble course, teaching people exactly how to find low competition niches, etc. Broken down the algorithm. So we're very good at that. But I, that's exactly what I would do here. I could take that exact same design and upload it to Zazzle. I can upload it to TeePublic. Maybe even sell it as a digital file on Etsy, which could possibly work. Even print on demand on Etsy. It's a possibility. Um... Society6, uh, I personally wouldn't upload this Society6, but it it would work. It would work to Society6, but I personally wouldn't. Um, the reason why I say that is because with Society6, for people who don't know about my Society6 strategies, with Society6, obviously the first hurdle is appearing in search. After you, And I made a whole, cor uh, not a course, but a mini lesson on uh, our members area. And when I say our members area, if you go to poddegree.com for people who are curious, uh, I'll just whip it out here. P, uh, let me see here. Poddegree.com. Okay, you go to poddegree.com. Let me see here. Did I screw up the uh, the domain? Continue to site. Let's see. Poddegree.com. Here we go. This is the site. Okay, so we have a thousand seventy six members. Um, and here's the lesson. Let me go here. Uh, let's see here. Society6, appearing in search. After I focus on appearing in search, great, I got that handled. Uh, then what I'm going to do is with all my designs, obviously certain levels of intentionality, but I would, um, this is assuming I was to upload this on Society6, I would presume that it would sell more on something like a t-shirt or something like that. The reason why is, I, I've said this before, but on Society6, the biggest earners for me are products that sell as prints. So pretty much anything that fits on a wall is a huge seller for me. Um, also, those acrylic boxes are, you know, kind of mediocre sales, but, you know, they bring in some income uh, pretty consistently. Definitely not as high earning as some of the prints, but hey, it's not that bad. Uh, but I, I would probably do that on Society6 if I chose to upload it to Society6, but me personally, I wouldn't because, like I said, I'm more loyal to high earning, high profit uh, sellers. On Society6, products that earn more, yield more per sale. And so the prints for me are, are the big thing. But that's what I would do. Um, also, did I mention uh, stock photography? 
yeah, I would up almost everything. I would upload stock photography, almost everything. Like I said, uh, let's go into my create section here. So I've created some images that are somewhat flexible, and I actually created these uh, more specifically for this this video here. So like all these images of crabs and lions and whatever, you guys see them here. These are images that I would absolutely use for print on man. Now, I'm clicking on this image and this image because these two images are significantly different and this one than all the rest. And if you could pick it out and figure it out what it is, I'll just give you a second to stare at the screen. Give you a second. What makes them significantly different? Let me know. And by the way, this is my uh, demo account for Mid Journey, so this is not the actual accounts that I'm consistently using for my actual accounts on uh, stock photography sites. I will take these images and upload them to like a demo stock photography um, account on Adobe and things like that, but they're not, you know, the ones that I depend on income for. I think that that one has like 5,000 uploads or 2,000, I don't know, demo stuff. So nothing crazy, but think about it. What do you think is different in these three images than all the others? And the answer is pretty clear, but we'll let people guess. Uh, the the answer is, and you could pause the video, but the answer is is that it's it's it doesn't have a back a white background. This is an image from corner to corner, um, which is really more ideal for everything that does not go on T-shirts. So if I was to upload this to Redbubble, right, in my mind, I would personally assume, and not just assume because I'm not really assuming. I've I've sold tens of thousands of products. I'm not really assuming, but in my mind, I know that this would not sell on one of those t-shirts that's a corner-to-corner t-shirt. If it sells on a t-shirt, it's one of those all-over print ones, which is much more likely. Um, it would sell on things like a mouse pad, you know, products where the image stretches all the four corners, as opposed to an image like this, which I can clean out the background, make it transparent, slap it on any product, and it can work. So... There are products that are obviously more versatile in the print-on-demand game. This is not nearly as versatile as this, right? Because of the transparency effect that it has. However, I'm still going to upload both. I'm still going to make money off them both. You know, it's all scale, automation, things are easy now. So I would still take advantage of both. However, um, because there are viewers who want to learn this kind of stuff, that's why I'm kind of pointing out the issues. Generally, these images are all relatively the same. I did want to point out, however, these images, because these images are a little bit, probably like from here to here, a little slightly different. And these images don't have really any details in the background, or very little details, as compared to something like this. So, if you notice, they still have somewhat of a background. Even you can remove the background. They still have somewhat of a background, which works great for a t-shirt design. Uh, but an image like this, I would use as an element. So I would absolutely use this image as an element for a Zazzle design. Maybe it might be some sort of invitation card. Maybe it might be some sort of, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to list out products, but you get my point. I would use it as an element. The same way that you guys saw that other element image with the young ladies in their dresses or whatever. The same concept. I would use this as an element. And I could make, I could make a t-shirt with a crab on it like that looks like this. But the reality is, is how much draw does that really have? Especially on something like T Public or, or on Redbubble, it might have like five percent of some of my consistent sellers in terms of the draw, in terms of the demand, in terms of the need, and also in variable to or in comparison to or in ratio to its competitors, right? So for me, you know, if we're taking competitors and design approach. This would not be my first choice to put something like this on a t-shirt. This has a little bit more detail. You know, when I when I upload something like this, it's a little bit more detailed. It has more character to it. It has kind of a better approach. So I could feel comfortable putting something like this on a t-shirt. Um, I would use, like I said, these things as elements. Now, in terms of stock photography, I would upload all of these to stock photography sites. You know, of course. I mean, it's an opportunity to easily make money. I'm not going to put that to the side. But you get my point here. Um, so, yeah, these images are all relatively the same. Uh, let's see here. We got some... I believe I created some, like, sticker-type images. Okay, these images... Okay, here we go. So, these images here, 
they're not stickers, but they are like, um, I guess you can say an array of images. Some are usable, some are not. Um, if I really, really wanted to build this whole thing out, I would probably hire a virtual assistant to only sit here and download. Truthfully, I could probably pay someone to create a tool that could do this. But to sit down and sift through all these images and edit the images, like erase parts that, that are irrelevant, separate them, things like that, and extrapolate that out into a bunch of different sales. So let's take this for example, right? Let's look at what images are not usable. So this image I would not use. I wouldn't even spend time trying to use it. The rest seem pretty good. Uh, I don't know if this is naturally how Rams look like. Um, I know that they look like this naturally. I don't know if this is a real thing, like if their horns actually look like this. Maybe some of you guys can correct me in the comments. I have no clue. But I would probably have this one erased, right? And I would have each of these Rams, I would have this whole image blown up through an upscaler, have each of these Rams individually cut out, upload to a stock photography site, assuming that I'm hiring either a virtual assistant or a machine is doing it. I'm not going to do it myself. I, I'm not going to spend time doing this myself, right? There's going to be higher ROI on other things that I could do. But a virtual assistant or machine could do it. And then what they'll do is they'll blow up the image. They'll separate each one in its own images. So this will be one, two, three, one, two, three. It'll be eight images, right, that would come out of it because I'm taking every single one except for this one. And then what I'm doing is I'm uploading the image where it's like a collection or it's all of them on one image to a stock photography site, which will also make money. So that's, I don't know, nine images right there. Then I would take a certain, you know, like array of these images, post them as like a t-shirt or something like that on Redbubble. Maybe make a pattern out of it. Who knows? Um, and, you know, it's been pretty profitable overall. I had this strategy before. I, I did this with uh, fish, and I took all kinds of different saltwater fish, and I made a t-shirt that said saltwater fishing guide. And all the different fish on there were saltwater fish. I think it had like fi close to like 50, maybe a little less, but um, species of fish. And I put them up there with their little names and all that. And that image sold literally hundreds of times on Redbubble on TeePublic. Uh, and so it was really, really good. So images like this kind of have a similar approach. Obviously not exactly the same, but it's similar. Um, and you can use it for print on man. You could use it for stock photography. So pretty simple. Images like this, I, I would use this as maybe incorporating it as an element of a pattern uh, in the stock photography, uh, not in, stock, in print on demand world. I would upload a stock photography and I'd probably make more money in the stock photography long term on the on stuff like this. So hopefully this video is helpful. I, I know that, you know, we're out here, we're working hard, we're doing a lot of different things on a daily basis. By the way, look how beautiful this is. Anyways, we're doing things, a lot of things on a daily basis. We're working on print on demand. We're working on stock photography. We're, we're building our character. We're working out. We're going to the gym. We're doing a whole bunch of different things. All I could say is keep working hard. The results will pay off. And let's just keep doing it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.